I'm Beth. And I'm Beth. Welcome, Welcome to, to Physics, Physics with Beth and Beth. Welcome to AP Physics 1, Unit 1. We are on these free fall problems. And um, we're going to talk about this classic problem of throwing a ball directly up into the air. So there's no horizontal component, only Y. It's going to go up. And then it's going to come straight back down. Okay, so here's up and here's down. Now, what they want is the maximum height. So what is this max height at the top right here? They want that max height. And then they want to know also how long will it be in the air? So let's just get started. We're going to start by starting at the cross, identifying all those variables we have. So we're going to start with our acceleration. Okay, first of all, let's back up a minute. When you look at these problems, it's a tad bit scary because you know you're pro you know we're using our big three, our uniform accelerated motion equations. We know we're using those. We also know that uh, there's quite a few variables in them, and we're only given one variable in this, and that is that initial velocity as it takes off at 8.5 meters per second. So you feel like there's not enough information, but actually due to concepts and understanding these free fall concepts, that you know more variables than you think. All right, so we're just going to get started on identifying this. Now, by the way, let me go ahead and write these um, three, big three here for you. V naught squared plus 2A delta. We're going to say delta Y. I know your equation sheet says delta X, but we're moving vertically. I like to keep uh, reminding myself the direction there. And then we have Y final equals Y naught plus V naught T plus 1 half A T squared. Okay, there's your big three, your uniform accelerated motion. All right, let's get go back to this cross, start identifying. We know acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Why? This is a free fall. Earth is taking over and controlling once that leaves your hand. All right, doesn't matter if you throw it up, if it's at the top, if it's coming down, if you throw it down. Acceleration of free fall is always negative 9.81 meters per second squared. All right, now our initial velocity is 8.5 meters per second. When we get to this max height that they want, it stops momentarily for a split second to turn around directions and fall back down. So we know our final velocity is zero meters per second. All right, okay, we all of a sudden have more information and we know they're looking for this delta Y. When we find that, that's in meters because that's displacement. All right, here we go. I'm looking at these, these equations. I'm not going to use this first one if I'm looking for delta Y because it, delta Y is not in the equation. All right, position is not in the equation. I can use either this second one or the third one because I see final and initial position or I see my, uh, my displacement there. All right, however, I know nothing about time, and time is in this third one, so that's a no for me on that one, and I'm going to use this second equation. All right, so I'm gonna say V final squared equals V naught squared plus two A delta Y. All right, now, we want delta Y. It's typical in physics to solve for the variable first, then input the numbers. Could you have said, okay, my final is zero, my initial is 8.5 squared plus two, my acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second squared delta Y, and solve it that way? Yes. More appropriately would have been to know that this was zero and say, okay, it's going to end up being our initial velocity squared divided by two and divided by that acceleration. And again, I love to put the subscripts in just to remind myself that I'm in that Y direction. And my students always called this the velocity oi for oi, another free fall problem. But anyway, there you go. So, and that's going to equal your delta Y. When you put in all of those numbers or solve for this delta Y up here, uh, you're going to get that your delta Y is 3.68 meters. 
So that's going to be your maximum height that you're going to go is 3.68 meters. I actually have two sig figs there, so I would have called that 3.7 meters. I would put a box around it. By the time you get done with these problems, they are like a piece of art uh, for you. So frame it, and that way it helps uh, the AP board. It helps teachers find your answers. All right, now here we go. Now we want how long was it in the air? Okay, here's a concept, and it says, here's your big clue. It's going to land at the same height that it's thrown, all right? Meaning that it's the same height right here. Wherever you throw it from, it lands at that same height, meaning time up equals time down. All right, so we're going to find time up, and I'm going to switch to another color here of red so that we can uh, find this on the busy page that's getting very busy. All right, so time up. Okay, I need something with time. I know my final velocity, check. I know my initial velocity, it's 8.5. My final zero because it gets to max height. I know my acceleration in the Y is negative 9.81, and I'm looking for time. So I now can use this one, all right, and I can find time. So my final, V final, equals V initial, plus my acceleration in the Y times my time. I'm going to solve for that time, the variable first. I know my final is zero, so that's going to be a negative if I subtract initial velocity from both sides. Uh, divided by my acceleration in the y is going to equal time. If it's hard for you to see that right now, uh, then go ahead and just write your numbers in. V final is 0. V initial is 8.5. Acceleration is negative 9.81. And you have times time, and you're solving for that time. Either way, however you do it, you're going to get that time is 0.8. Six, six seconds. Okay. Now that is time up. Now we said time up, which is 0.866 equals time down, which is 0.866. So if I want total time before this ball lands, how long will it be in the air? You're going to have to add those two up. So my total time is going to be 0 0.866 plus 0 0.866, which ends up being 1.7 seconds. Okay, so that's the problem. That's how you do a free fall. Now, it's worth noting that down here we start at 8.5 meters per second and we end at 0 meters per second. So we are slowing down on this side. As it goes up, you're always slowing down. And as it falls, we're going from 0 meters per second to a negative 8.5 meters per second. So it is speeding up. It goes from 0 to 8.5 meters per second as far as speed, but it's negative because it's down. This is positive because it's up. And it all works out with our signs. Velocity is positive. Acceleration is negative. We know when those are opposite directions or opposite signs, you're slowing down. On the downside, velocity is negative and acceleration is negative. We know that when you have the same sign, or which means same direction, that you are indeed speeding up. So it all works out. I hope that helps. Thank you for watching, and happy physicsing.